Hi, it's September 24th, 2017, 2.15 p.m. to be exact. I just finished putting out my document about the blood moon tetrad eclipses on my 1260d.com website. I had put it on my other website um, some years earlier, but I redid it in a clearer way and put it out today. And after I put it out, uh, a word from the Lord came to me. Now yesterday I felt defeated simply because, well maybe I shouldn't have, but I looked at the statistics and realized very few people are bothering to take my 30 years of work seriously. Um, and so I was feeling defeated. Went to bed, woke up this morning, and as I said I worked on that document, put it out, and then the Lord quickened my mind to count the number of days from when the first Passover Tabernacles Tetrad eclipse occurred. And it was uh, 1260 less two days ago. And I won't get into why the last two days, but the Lord sh reminded me of two things. Now this message is not about me. This message is about those who feel defeated because they went and predicted that the Lord Jesus was going to return yesterday and some today. Now, I never believed that for a second and God was giving me words that go far into the future and anyways you can read 1260d.com for yourself to see that. But the point is, is that the Lord gave me a word because as I was feeling defeated and I wanted mercy, the Lord says to me, tell my people who believed that I was about to come on the 23rd of September because of the sign in the heavens that was similar to Revelation 12 and although it wasn't a tremendous sign it was an important sign tell them that their heart was right that they love me and that I forgive them for forgetting the scripture which says no man knows the day or the hour and ignoring those warnings no man knows the month no man knows perhaps even larger time frames than that but, this is what the Lord has shown me. The Lord loves you. He's proud of your heart. He is thrilled that you're wanting Him to return. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't be discouraged. God loves you. The second thing the Lord opened my mind to see is that 1260 days from the first Tabernacle Tetrad will be in two days, as I said. And uh, today is on the regular Jewish calendar the, um, the fourth day of creation, the anniversary of it, on the regular Jewish calendar, which is when God created the sun, moon, and stars. So after I put this out, I realized, hmm, that's fitting, because it's all about the signs and the sun, moon, and stars. But two days from now, which will therefore be the anniversary when God created man, will be exactly 1260 days from April 15th, 2014, when the first Tabernacle Tetrad eclipse occurred. Now, many were disappointed over that too. Many speculated beyond what it was worth or was meant to be. And that's why God gave me a, a year and a half of study in that to, to stretch your mind. A few listened to it as well. It's the way she goes. However, the Lord reminded me of this scripture. Because you'll notice, if you back up one chapter from Revelation 12 to Revelation chapter 11, which are related, And I want to read it to you. I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, go and measure the temple of God and the altar and count the worshippers there. But exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months, which is three and a half years of 30 day months. But here I'm getting to the point that relates to you. Because you will notice that 1260 plus this three and a half days this passage is going to refer to comes to exactly the eve 
of the Day of Atonement coming up. Keep that in mind. 1260 days comes to the sixth day of creation anniversary plus three and a half days will equal the, the, the beginning of the Day of Atonement, which is when it, which is when it was, uh, began. It didn't, at the very threshold in the evening is when the Day of Atonement begins. And that's when it has its main uh, meaning. And that's when um, uh, the release for the captives was pronounced and so forth on the Day of Atonement, on the Day of Jubilee. Now, the Jubilee is in seven years from now, but this is the 490th seven-year cycle beginning uh, around this time period, this month. Anyways, verse 3, And I was given power, and I will, sorry, and I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. What are the two witnesses? Oh, I wish I could just take this understanding into people. It's not two literal people. And if it is, who knows? I doubt that very much. But this is what the Lord keeps on showing me and reminding me and speaking to my spirit. It's in that whoever has the prophetic eyes and mouth of God, they represent the two witnesses. That we are a body. There is, we are one. And so when certain, certain, uh, when certain brethren are defeated and cow down to prosperity gospel and different things and they're afraid to pronounce what the Lord is really saying about these hurricanes and so forth. Don't gloat over them because you are a body. You are together being defeated. And so this is what the Lord stressed. We are the two witnesses. We fail, but we will rise again. Over and over again he does this pattern over and over again and this is another example of it although uh, an important one a collective one for for the, for the world because many Christians around the world were believing the Lord is going to return and now they've been humiliated by the public media around the world and rightly so they were, shouldn't have done that but God doesn't view that like that he sees you through the eyes of Christ you are perfect in his eyes you are beloved you are part of his body there's no fault in you so rise up and in three and a half days, 1263 and a half days will be the um, beginning of the Day of Atonement from the Tabernacle Tetrads, as I said, of April 15th, 2014. And I want you to again hear the rest of this verse. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes down from their mouths and devours their enemies. Now, I mean, this could be literal, but by and large, almost always, it's symbolic. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. These men have power to shut up the sky so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. And they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Do you feel like you've been overpowered and attacked and kind of dead? Take heart. Their bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Again, think symbolically, please. For three and a half days, men from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze at their dead bodies and refuse them burial. That's exactly what the world is doing right now. They're mocking a segment of us. We are one body. Saying, ha, where is the promise of his coming? Another failed prophecy. Ha, ha, ha. For three and a half days, men from every people, tribe, and language will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because these two witnesses had tormented those who live on the earth. But after three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. You will get back up. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here! 
And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on. And at that very hour, there was a severe earthquake. And a tenth of the city collapsed. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake. And the survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. The third woe is coming soon. Again, think symbolically. We're not saying the end of the world is going to come in three and a half days in the rapture. It's not what this is about. But it's about you personally and us collectively rising up again. Prophets, don't be as scared to prophesy in the name of the Lord what the Lord gives you. Don't fear men. Don't fear those who turn the gospel into merchandise. Fear God. Continue to speak in His name. Rise up on those eagles' wings and fly.